What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Chris Gunther Show. Thank y'all so much for watching. Remember to like and share this video. We greatly appreciate it. On today, the Chris Gunther Show welcomes the youngest director, I think, in the history of the Playhouse. Mr. Trey, what's going on with you, brother? What up, brother man? Good to see you, How bro. You good? good to see you, bro. Man, congrats on all your success, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'm excited. There's a lot going on. Um, Post COVID, as you can see, yes, sir. Uh, we have a lot of events happening here right now, even during this interview. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm excited to be here with you. Thank you for having me, man. Bro. Thank you for coming on, man. Yeah. You know, you're a busy man. Literally was working, came here to do another event. Let's get right into it. The yeah. color purple, getting yeah. ready to debut. How's everything going for you, man? It's going great, man. Um, better than I actually expected because I expected a lot of, you know, not just hesitancy, but um, a lot of trials and tribulations. You know, it's with a whole pandemic and have to revamp a whole business, basically, um, and bring theater back because it's been dormant for a whole almost a year and a half now. So um, that has been a challenge. But other than that, I mean, it's moved the way it should. Let me say that um, there's definitely been other challenges like, you know, now with post pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, with people um, being vaccinated and things like that, you right. know, and dealing with the whole, you know, issue at large, um, that has been challenging. But nothing really as detrimental to the show, like in regard to like props or sets or you know time or anything like that. We're on schedule, um, which is big for me as a director. I understand you know, holding a schedule uh, is imperative because it allows us to you know produce the best quality show um and now with this new partnership with dior um and with them you know backing the production financially as well i mean it really has become much larger than the original vision was you know when i got the call that i was doing the color purple after dream girls two years ago mm -hmm. i was super excited but it was just a playhouse thing um, and based off the success of dream girls, I was like, wow, we can do something better. So when Dior expressed their interest in, uh, partnering with the playhouse, um, and that I would get the chance to do that, <laughs> it was like <laughs> everything doubled, you know, it, not just the, uh, the press, not just the marketing, not just the budget, everything. So it was like, wow, uh, this is on a much larger scale than I had thought. So I feel honored to be in the position as a director. Uh, not just as the youngest director for the organization in 90, what, eight years. Crazy. We have, we have two more years before we reach our 100-year anniversary here. Um, so, I mean, it's exciting. I'm just passionate and, and just happy to be where I am. I genuinely appreciate you for elaborating on your answer just now yeah. because it's great to see the passion. You mm -hmm. know, it's all in your eyes. People can feel it as they watch this. Mm -hmm. um, take me back. Like, what was it like for you when you got the call saying that, all right, Trey, we're doing the color purple next, but now we're going to branch out and go to Dior. Like, what was that call like for you? Um, it didn't necessarily start out like that. I got the call that we were going to do the color purple and I was super ecstatic because, you know, I believe that that's a show for this area because it deals with um, healing and identity and uh, love, hope, freedom, things like that. All messages that this community needs, our people, you that's know right. what I'm saying. Um, so I was super excited about that. But um, the reason why Dior even came into the picture was because we were still under COVID restrictions mm -hmm. uh, for entertainment in the state of Ohio. And... Um, we can only preview the show here to we have a house here probably like 400 is wow. what we sell tickets here for that's considered a sellout show 400 seats so you know I, I think at the time the percentage rate of um attendees that could attend any event inside a building was like 25 percent of the house mm -hmm. so that's like 100 people you know it's not worth investing like forty five thousand dollars. you know for 100 people a night you won't even make you're not going to make you're not gonna, to that you're back. not going to make your money back. So Dior came into the picture because 25 percent of their house was like 645 people, which is more than our capacity here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we gained two extra two hundred extra seats in an auditorium to sell uh, in their theater. I think their theater can hold maximum 2,500 people. Wow. So it was just easier. So that's how it began. And then that very same week, I believe uh, that we made that decision, DeWine opened the entertainment app. So we went from 640 something seats to 1800. It's crazy how boom, so it just, I was just jumped like, right back up. 
now this is much bigger than what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 1,800 people. That was daunting at first, but it wasn't something that I believe we could not have done. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, we definitely could do that. We yeah. will do it. And, you know, speaking mm -hmm. about people, this is one of the first casts, to my knowledge, where it looks like everybody has either worked together in the past or mm -hmm. seems like everybody is friends. As a director, how exciting is it to come into work knowing that you're doing this with people that you consider friends? It is the most uh, satisfying thing. And the reason why is because uh, you don't have to worry that they will not deliver. Because in acting, specifically in our community, it's hard for people to... Uh, pull out of themselves uh, the truest character mm -hmm. without it being a bunch of work on the actual director or the production team as a whole. Excuse me. With this cast, uh, I did not have to do that. Um, I had to do it for a few people, but not the majority of them at large. Uh, they came with the experience. They came with the drive. They came with the passion to want to really... Uh, put their all into their own individual character. That was important for me. So uh, we had about 50 people audition for this show, which is 10 more than Dreamgirls. We had 40 people audition for Dreamgirls. Wow. Uh, and that, it was what it was, you know, with those same people. And I also knew who I wanted to be a part of Dreamgirls because, you know, there's only a few shows that are fully black that I know our community can handle. So I rely on my friends a lot to really show up and leave the impact on our community because we live here, you know. Um, we know our neighbors and the patrons that come to see our shows. We know them because they're family. They go to our churches. You know, we work with them. That's right. Um, so I wanted to really keep it close in the home as, you know, close to home as possible. But um, um, it really wasn't that big of a challenge uh, pulling anything out of them. And it was a real advantage having people that I do know, uh, like I said, because it made it easier for me and my production team. You know how to communicate with them. That's you right. You know, you can say certain things to them. They won't be offended, you know, because <laughs> some people get butt hurt. Or, you know, if you say that vocal's not, you know, the best vocal That's you right. could have done, you know, they understand because they, they take accountability. They're like, you're absolutely right. I'm better than that. You know, some people would, you know, be hurt you know, because you said that, Tim. So it's like finding the balance always. Uh, we do have a few p new people in the show that I have to pull the character out of them, you know, and really encourage them to do their best and, you know, to think about their character on three-dimensional level uh, and not just one-dimensional. Um, there's a lot of facets that go into it. But overall, the process has been very easy because I do know them uh, and they know me, so there's already that trust there. It's not, I didn't have to spend weeks trying to beat something out of them. Um, they came delivering something. It's really just been refining uh, the gift that God already gave them. A so, lot of times, directors have to pull things out of their actors. Mm -hmm. But as a director, what did you have to pull outside of you? Because you know, coming behind Dream Girls, the oh, pressure yeah. is on. Yes, uh, it was. It was. It was very interesting for me, uh, and it did leave me a little bit nervous because I'm not one to think. Oh, you know. Dream Girls was my directorial debut. You know, I'm not one to think, you know, I got all this experience, you know, I'm the best director in the land. Like, I wasn't walking around big headed after a super successful show. What the biggest challenge for me was, can we do it again? That's right. <laughs> can we do it again? That the proof is in that pudding. Literally. You know? can, can you do it again? <laughs> Repeat and enlarge. Because you know? I came out to, I wasn't, I don't think it was the first night, but I, I did come out and just wanted to see how everything went. Yeah. And I was looking and I'm like, it's great when you have people in your community that really go after what they say they wanted to do. Right. And I was looking at it and I'm like, all of this is done by a guy who was in his early 20s. Yep. Incredible, man. You really did your thing with that. It was it was so much fun. And I'm, I'm trying to draw on um, a lot of that drive and passion that I had back then because Really, I tell people all the time now, it's no secret. Um, Dream Girls was, uh, for me, it was me trying to prove myself a lot, prove my talent to the community, you know, not just the artistic community, but, you know, the my neighbors, our Youngstown and surrounding areas that, you know, I'm also um, 
I can do this professionally, things like that. Because, you know, I don't feel like my name is as out there as people. People know me by association because of my friends and things like that. But, you know, to be known for your work, like you're known for this, what we're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get known, I'm known for (laughs) theater, you know, because I do theater, but not for anything specific, you know? I feel like this director thing has made me known in a specific way. You know, he's a great director. You know, you know if Trey does something, it's going to be great. That's right. Phenomenal, you know. So a lot of my drive and passion for Dreamgirls was back behind that. For this, for me, it wasn't so much proving myself as it was just being authentic. Uh, Because so much of the material in this show is that. It's real. It's authentic. It's harsh. um, But it's also um, uh, soothing. And it it makes you feel warm Mm -hmm. inside. Um, It's a transformative piece. So I allowed myself during COVID, I consider COVID to be a blessing. It gave everybody a year off and it really allowed us to be, to rest. Which is something I struggle with. You know, the scriptures say, be still and know. Okay. That um, guy, right. You had to be, you had to be still. And we all got still. I struggle with that. You know, we, we all had to be, whether we wanted to or not. I'll be the first to admit I struggle with it because Mm -hmm. I don't like sitting down. My wife tells me all the time, you need to just chill. You do work hard. I can't chill, man. You do work hard. Like you see the way that my beard is effed up right now. Look at mine. Brother, it's working. You feel me? Same. Okay. Ah! They had a haircut. I missed my haircut. Why appointment. you think my hat is on my head right now? Because yeah. if I take Seriously. this off, y'all gonna clown me. That's... You will not catch me on my <laughs> show again with the crazy head. Okay. I remember how when I was chopping up with Robert Richard from One on One and all that oh, good yes, stuff. Yes. People was like, I I, I can't really like, say bro, what I want to say. You gotta get <laughs> it together, was like, bro, bro. What you doing? I was like, dang, bro. <laughs> it's it's it's. But it's still something that you got people that watch my show and right. people now yeah. will support yeah. coming out to see the color purple. Yeah, man. Open at night, almost a couple of weeks. How's it gonna feel? Uh, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, I just told my cast this last night at rehearsal. I said, you know, we got seven days to you know fully perfect this show before we go into Tech Week. And I told them, I said, you know, during Tech Week on the twentieth, I'm just releasing it. I'm releasing it um, off of me. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to my stage manager. I'm giving it to God. I'm giving it to the universe. I'm just releasing it um, to the atmosphere uh, and allowing uh, the message of this story to fall on whoever it may fall on, um, which I think will be thousands of people because this story really is about the human spirit and how um, it's so resilient and how it overcomes adversity time and time and time again, uh, which is not just Seeley's story. It's not just Mr. Story or Sophia and Harpo. It's Trey's story. It's Chris's story. <laughs> it's your mama's story. It's my mama's story, our grandma's story. It's our story. It's the human story. We all have to go through that. Uh, it's a story of identity, right? Knowing who you are. And, and I'm not talking about what you do in real life. You're a doctor or you're, you know, your connection to source, where you come from. It's very much that. Um, you, you, you sense a lot of that when you watch our show. Um, the show is really designed to be a minimalism sh- show. Mm-hmm. So there's not anything on the stage to make them look so fancy the way Dream Girls was, a bunch of flashy lights and, you know, all that good stuff. It's not that. It's very stripped to its bare minimums. And it allows my cast of 22 people to tell the raw, honest truth and to be present in each moment to where by the end of the show, there's not a dry eye in the audience because you realize that you are Seeley in real life. (laughs) It's very interesting how the directors can say those things Mm -hmm. because I got a chance to chop it up with James and and I had asked him, you know, as an actor... In terms of identifying, you mm-hmm. know, what did you have to identify with with your character? So yeah. you, as a director, what did you have to identify that could really pull out the best in your, you know, castmates? Ooh, I had to identify the truth. Okay. Um, and what I mean by the truth is that the truth of all of I had to deal with me first as a director. That's and what, that's what 2020 did for me. Same here. To, to prep for this show. Because the show really is spiritual at its bottom line. It is. It, it's like a transformative spiritual thing. And I think that's why it's such an emotional piece of art. Um, so I really was dealt with spiritually all throughout 2020. That gave me the tools to use to be able to incorporate that into my cast. And to really use um, that spiritual connection to draw out of them 
uh, or to uh, give them motive to connect to deeper parts of themselves to play these characters authentically because um, I knew it was going to be a challenge. I knew it. You know, nobody wants to uh, play, you know, uh, a rapist or nobody wants to play, especially black men. You know, black men have an issue with that now being portrayed as villains. We sure you know? do. Um, and rightfully so, you know, because they're not. We're not. We're not villains, you know, but we definitely have, you know, had, had some history that we need to hold ourselves accountable for. Uh, but so do the women as well, you know, in this show. So it was really just dealing with my heart um, and my insecurities, my fears um, as a as a man, as a person, uh, as Trey, before I can ever begin to communicate that to my cast. Like, I need you to be here. I need you to feel this. I need you to be present in this moment. Have you ever felt like this in life, you know, to pull the character out of them? It was very much of that. I even brought on a spiritual liaison, a part of this production, every Thursday and Friday. We have um, basically like soul checks where, um, my spiritual liaison, her name is Siobhan. Um, love you, sister, if you see this. Um, <laughs> uh, what she did for my cast was we really uh, allowed them to decompress from the week. And it had nothing to do with the show um, specifically. That's it was right. just like the amount of pain. Because I have no idea what my cast goes through when they leave the theater or before they come in. They mm -hmm. could have been in an argument on the phone before they got here. They could have been worried about paying bills. I have no idea. So I allowed my spiritual liaison to make a space and room for them to just cry, weep. There's been lots of crying. I'm talking about breakdowns. I believe you hear it. what I'm saying to you. Grown men, 60 plus, 50 plus women breaking down about childhood stuff because it's very much that. This content will make you go there. Sometimes you need to let all mm -hmm. of that stuff out so you can become the best version and of yourself. And that's why I do this. The only reason why I direct, I care more about the impact in that way than I do about the flashy, flashiness of the show. This is artistry, yes, but art should make you feel, right? And Nina Simone said it, you know, she said an artist should reflect the times. And the times right now is what this show is about, you know? Underneath all the glamour and the makeup and the eyebrows and the swag that we all bring, <laughs> we really are broken. And that's exactly what this show tries to deal with, is get us to identify our brokenness and. I want each audience member to walk out of that theater encouraged that they can overcome it, that they could be better, that uh, they can make that decision, you know, deal with that pain, address that person, fix a relationship. We all got <laughs> those, something that need to be fixed. Those types of things, you know, and that's stuff that people don't want to talk about. I hope you come and want to, you know, deal with it or at least ready, you know. Life is too short. Um, to waste any time, you know, not living life to its fullest. So you might as well deal with it now because eventually you're going to have to. Even if you're on your deathbed, <laughs> those same problems are going to come as ghosts <laughs> to you. And they're going to be like, you never dealt with us. Unfortunately, you know, and you're going to have to take them to the grave in that pain. I don't. I want to relieve you. I want this message to relieve <laughs> you of that so you can live an authentic, purposeful life. Unfortunately, we got to mm -hmm. get we're ready to get up out of here because you're yeah. a very busy man. But yes, before we go... And I definitely feel people going to start coming back in. Like, hey, Trey, can you come talk to me for a yeah, second? Yeah. But before we jump out of here, how can people get the tickets and when does the show premiere? The show goes on uh, in two weeks. It goes on September 24th. It runs through September 24th through October 3rd. Uh, you can go to DiorPAC.org to get your tickets. Um, you can call the box office at uh, Powers Auditorium. Uh, you can call the box office at the Playhouse. They will direct you to Dior. Um, that's how you can get your tickets. Youngstown, show up. Akron, show up. Canton, show up. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is the first regional premiere of the show since it came off of Broadway. Man. Many, many theaters have done the old version that, you know, came on Broadway in 2005. But we are the first theater to do it of, based on the revival, which premiered in 2015 on Broadway, which I saw in 2016 with the um, original cast. So come and support. This show is for you, family. Um, you will love it. You'll walk away empowered. You'll walk away moved. Uh, this one, I believe, will be even better than Dream Girls, to be honest. Man, nothing else needs to be asked, ladies and gentlemen. Trey, on a Chris Gun the show, be sure that you like and share this video. The Color Purple premieres September 24th. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Gotta go. Gotta go.